the classification of the severity of the patients. So basically, every disease is classified into uh, mild to moderate and then to severe. Okay, the basic part. And uh, how do you classify, how do you triage a patient in this thing? Like, how do you put a patient in a category from mild or moderate or severe? So, uh, I think most of the uh, participants are MBBS students in here. They might, they might be working also. So, you must, anyone uh, can tell me, like, they must have worked in hospital setups. So, how, how did you triage your patient? How did you put a patient? to a category. Anyone? So I push all the attendees to post the answers in the chat box. How do you categorize the patients? So how do you put a patient like... Uh, okay. uh, we have an answer from Pranita doctor depending upon the symptoms and CT score. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that can be. So, like, I, I'll, I'll request, like, uh, how do you um, start from the one point one? Like, we did a CT score. Like, patient comes to you in an emergency. Okay, how do you, how do you manage? You don't know. Like, I, if I go to a hospital setup, okay, I, I am having symptoms, and uh, what will I'll say to you that I am suffering from cold. And I'm, I'm feeling feverish. How do you class? How about what you're gonna do primarily? First thing you do is, what do you do? Obviously, like uh, as you to see the, this is so. What everything? Uh, see the rule thing. Main part of the emergency thing is we go A B C D E. We check for airways. We check for breathing. We check for circulation. Everything. If a patient comes to a hospital setup. The primary thing you suspect ki a patient is suffering from COVID. Okay. First of all is your protection, your safety. Okay. So what you do is you wear a PPE kit primarily. Okay. So your safety is because a person is already infected. And if you are not taking precaution and you're not taking safety measures, the person is going to infect everyone. So primarily is the PPE kit. Then you you don't you it's not confirmed that a person is suffering from COVID. You need to do a testing first. Okay. So then it goes one and all. I said I am having symptoms and I'm not, I didn't tell ki I have COVID or something. So that's what that's what I'm trying trying to explain. Ki always go step by step. So it is just like checking for vitals and all. That is primarily first we take a patient to the bed. Like a protocol, like COVID room. If you think a person is suffering from COVID, you do a testing. If it is positive, you go further with monitoring of vitals, everything like that. Okay. So you read, you read like a person, you did check for SpO2 levels. So you see in my presentation, non severe is absence of severe or critical signs. Okay. Severe, you consider is SpO2 less than 90%. On room mirror, okay. Respiratory rate less than 30 uh, or more than 30, sorry, and raised respiratory rate in children, okay, and signs of severe respiratory distress, okay. Uh, so you said CT score part. So you think, like, if you think uh, SpO2 is a per, if, if uh, there is a patient aged 68 years old patient, okay. And a person is a case of already known case of COPD. Okay. And the SPO2 level is 88. No fever associated. You did a test, COVID test, and that comes out to be negative. What are you going to do? You'll do CT for that patient? Yes or no? Anyone? You do CT for that patient? I request the attendees, uh, do we do the CT scan for the such kind of patients? Please write it down in the chat box. The person is already suffering. Uh, he is a COPD known case. He is afebrile and uh, his saturation is 
88 percent and you suspect that he or she might be having covid so would you do a hrct for that patient no any yeah. any specific any specific reason for that okay one doctor Kutejatul Kubra, uh, he says that yes, we do CT. Can we, can I get to know a reason for that? So, Dr. Kutejatul Kubra, can you please elaborate why you wanted to do a CT scan for such kind of patients? See, uh, if uh, see, I, I understand there's no respiratory symptoms, but uh, See, never rely on patient history. The primary uh, mantra for your successful, what we call a clinical course, I'll suggest you when you do, a, when you're working for a hospital setup, never rely on uh, patients, what we give history. Because Indians, most of them, people, what I have seen, like they are hesitant, as you know, because they are more, more worried ki, uh, you don't know ki, what, what their condition would be, how how they're going to be treated, everything like that. See, main part, yes, we need to do CT. See, every day, new or the other guidelines are coming. Uh, earlier, it was said, if you have a fever, okay, and you are, uh, what we call, quarantined for seven days, it was a quarantine period was of seven days, right? So if the fever breaks after three days, post your medication, no need to do a test. So like we cannot rely on these guidelines. The guidelines change every day, every day, every day. But uh, it is on you, how you manage a patient. So HRCT, yes, I, for, like we do HRCT for patients whom we suspect he or she can suffer. Okay, there are no respiratory symptoms. I agree to that. But a patient is already a known case of COPD. We need to check his CT score to know the severity for that. Okay, so... I'll suggest, yes, you should go for a CT scan for such kind of a patients, okay, so that you can manage the patient well. So you think, okay, so for the testing part, how do you say, you like RT-PCR and RAT, that rapid antigen test that we do. So how do you rate uh, for the uh, rapid antigen test and how do you rate RT-PCR? Okay, RT-PCR, we know it is the main confirmatory we do for that. But how do you think the success rate, success rate of rapid antigen has come out? To, has, you must have seen COVID wave, everyone has seen. So how do you think more, more success rate was of RT-PCR or of RAT? Um, so I request all the attendees, uh, I'm repeating the question again. What is the most successful rate? Is that RT-PCR or RAT? Please write it down in the chat box. We have a couple of answers, Doctor. Dr. Nina has answered it as RAT and Dr. Rithi has answered it as RT-PCR has more success rate. See, uh, uh, RT-PCR, see, RAT is a screening kind of a thing. Okay. And RT-PCR, it's more accurate. Okay. And for the patient with the initial days of infection, this is the last large kind of a viral load, load on the, like a person. So we do RT-PCR basically. The only, uh, the, what we call the only benefit for this rat is it is like very kind of a rapid kind of a thing. Na? So we be getting it quick results for that. We can do a large amount of screening, but it is not what we call a sensitive. It is not as sensitive as RT-PCR. So that is why RT-PCR is more preferred. Okay. See, you uh, clear your doubts on this, okay? We do a RAT for a person. If it is positive, the patient is positive, yes. RAT is negative, okay? You suspect doubt for the patient, like with the proper symptoms, you do HRCT and RT-PCR for that patient, okay? Uh, it is very necessary. So if RAT, uh, RAT negative doesn't confirm uh, what we call kila like, patient is uh, not suffering from uh, the ailment okay so to, so you should always do an rt pcr for that so uh, the third category as i told the critical 
obviously it requires a life sustaining treatment acute respiratory distress sepsis septic shock a person with the, so what is uh, so if we proceed clinically so what you what are you going to do for a patient you check for the vitals okay you the patient is on the bed uh, so what are you going to do primarily the first investigation you're going to do for the patient you know the patient is positive so what are you going to order to your, what are you going to instruct to your uh, nursing officer? Like what are you going to do? Yeah, good, good. Awesome. So the primary investigation that you do, uh, what you instruct to your nursing officer, what, you, what you're going to do to check for a patient in a critical kind of a scenario anyone the first test you do yeah vitals is good abg uh, of course so abg is the most important thing mm, like so maintenance is later the test is primarily abg we do so uh, anyone of you that is working for a government setup like I work for a government setup, okay. Uh, if I work, if I work for, I work for a civil hospital also. So we don't have if ABG machines there, right? Uh, Doctor Pranita, I guess. Do you have an ABG machine at your place? Your hospital setup. Yes, it's good. See, we don't have a ABG machine. I also don't. So how do you, what do you, what are you going to do for that patient? How do you manage that patient? Or just refer to the higher center? The best part of the civil hospital government setups, right? You refer the patient to the higher center, right? Yeah. 